This plantation is called Miss Farrell's Field. It's always been Miss Farrell's Field. In my grandfather's time, they grew barley and sugar beet here in Miss Farrell's Field and beyond in the corner, Miss Farrell herself was there with her little well outside. Now it is planted with trees. It's a mixed plantation, this one, an intimate mix of ash and sycamore. And since we have this Chilara infection throughout our forest, I might just um, zoom in on that area there in the centre of the screen. And anyone who's seen the infection before, there we go. That's what it looks like at a distance. It's a bit browner. You can see the brown patch from a distance. So, this also has a Chilara infection. Fortunately though, it's an intimate mixture. In this situation, it's not nearly the disaster it might first appear. It's a setback, yes, a big setback. It's a 50-50 intimate mixture. And we're gonna remove about 50% of it. And where we have removed the 50%, we're gonna scrape away the surface of the soil around all of the trees, which is gonna have an impact on the standing crop. We're going to need to be very careful. It might make the treatment in here well, it certainly will make the treatment in here a lot more expensive than is allowed for by the grant. But um, some of that, I hope, will be mitigated by the value for biomass fuel of the removed timber. Ash trees like this one. €5.65 per gigajoule. And um, if this was oven dry wood, there'd be... 19.2 gigajoules per tonne but since it'll be chipped far from oven dry there'll be less gigajoules per tonne if we're fortunate we might re receive something like 50 euros a tonne delivered to Eden Dairy for biomass it'll just about mitigate the cost of the treatment I'd suggest so there'll be nothing left over if we get away with that. But as I was saying, it's not the disaster of my first appear in here. Because it's an intimate mixture, the sycamore will be allowed to grow on and we may be able to interplant where there's been dense little bits of ash together with other species to bring on the understory. I'm not sure what we'll put in I've got a forester, well I've got a couple of foresters coming to walk around and have a talk about what we might do in each of the various locations where we've got this disease. In total, out of a 100 acre forest, we've got 25 acres that are affected in pure ash or intimate mixtures like this one. For example, in this one um, I've only included the area that's got ash on it, if you like. won't be so bad in Miss Farrell's field. Somewhere over here there's a huge ash tree that always stood in Miss Farrell's field. It's an old lady now and um, it's been the experience in Europe where the disease has ransacked the place if you like um, that the older trees take much longer to die. It's been experience in the UK, there's been some recent media around the idea of injecting trees with garlic, which helps them to resist the disease apparently, and treating the soil around the trees with activated biochar, which would be carbonized woody or, or plant material that's been um, treated to increase its surface area. 
I haven't researched into the lot reasons for any of that yet. Got quite a lot on my plate as it is. Planning what to do about this and it'll be very easy to panic. It'll be very easy to lose a lot of money, get put out of business, lose the farm under these circumstances. In my situation the forest is owned by my mum. The farm is owned by my mum and we're in a fortunate situation that we don't have any debt here. We're going to be very careful during this operation to keep the costs to a minimum, the efficiency to a maximum. And we'll be very, very, very careful biologically. You can be damn sure that every man that comes in or out of here gets his boots washed and his wheel arches washed and no plant material moved. But not much more to say about Miss Farrell's field. Oh, yes there is. It was planted in 2001. It was thinned in 2013. That's why I'm standing here in an open, empty rack. It's got a nice mixture around the edges of other species. There's some cherry and some birch. It's a favourite of the children in the springtime. Birch sap. It's a favourite drink. They, they, every year they come down and tap a tree or two and make up the hill with it many litres of sap and drink it happily for a week or two until the pleasure of it wears off and they wait again till the next spring to do it again. Quite what to put with the sycamore as an understory? Well, I'm open to suggestions. I really am open to suggestions. <laughs>